right guys, good morning. Welcome back to Capture Fish. I got a long drive ahead of me. The next few episodes are gonna be featuring my first solo road trip to Louisiana for the Bass Nation National Championship. I'm leaving from Ventura right now. It's uh, almost seven o'clock in the morning. I've got 12 hours ahead of me. I'm gonna try and make it all the way to Grant, New Mexico today. But uh, you know, we'll see. So my goal is to make this a uh, fun little series for you guys as I travel across America to fish this championship, which I've been very, very excited about this entire year, uh, ever since I qualified for it in February. So I'm uh, looking forward to this adventure ahead. Ride along with me and wish me luck. guys I've been driving for uh, just about 12 hours now I uh, stopped in a, in a zone in New Mexico called Bombay restaurant and buffet and <laughs> got myself some Indian curry got some lamb some lamb curry and some rice and some garlic naan excited to dig into this uh, I got one more hour left before I make it into uh, the RV park where I'm gonna spend the night. I figured pay 20 bucks cash, get a hot shower, and uh, you're sleeping off the highway and you're not like sleeping at some uh, random rest stop, but we'll see. I'll, uh, oh, I can't wait to stuff my face, I'm so hungry. <laughs> oh, it looks good. All right, just got in. It's an RV park. get off the main highway a little bit. Uh, but I'll show you where, uh, where's home for the night. <laughs> Ain't no Holiday Inn, but uh, the Forerunner Suite. <laughs> Got a little hack that I'm gonna try out for the first time. Okay, note to self, this thing sucks. Let's go back to the traditional bag. This is a great little backpacking tent, but you know what I'd, I'd, I'd recommend if you're doing this, uh, just get a, like a foam futon or something, because this is a pain. Better than this thing. Well, at least there's a light on this that can be handy, and I feel like if it locks, or if I had a bigger fitting or something, it would probably work better. But it's trying to make things easier for myself, but it ended up being a lot. That might. That's gonna be fun tonight. Mr. Choo Choo Train. All right mattress fully inflated entertainment system still lit up Gee. well if you're trying to get a, a nice quiet sleep uh, 
I guess I don't I don't know anywhere along the road it's gonna be a quiet place to rest your head. Definitely not a not at this RV park. I'll tell you that much. And we're in. <sighs> Twelve hours of driving, and uh, another ten tomorrow, and then another six after that. Pretty comfy, got my mosquito net. Again, courtesy to my buddy Ryan, thank you. And uh, it's not that bad, I put my sunshade, so not getting bla blasted out by headlights or anything like that. But not a first, uh, not a bad first leg of the trip. All right, time to get some sleep. See you guys in the morning. Cold. Good morning, guys. Well, it dropped into the low 30s last night. Probably shouldn't have cracked the window so much. I'm really cold. It's nice and warm in the sleeping bag, but uh, thermostat says that it's freezing outside. Whew. All right. It's uh, 5.07. No, 6.07. Lost an hour. Let me go and uh, get myself a coffee. Nice, warm coffee. <laughs> Uh, get back on the road still haven't decided where I've where I'm gonna stop I know I want to do another 10 uh, on the, another at least 10 to 11 hours today that's the goal and then uh sorry for the camera shaking guys I'm literally shivering um yeah I need to figure out where, where I'm gonna go whether I stay on the 40 or I uh, cut down in uh, Texas I'm just trying to figure out I, I made the the mistake of I thought Lake Eufaula Oklahoma was Lake Eufaula, Alabama. <laughs> Those are two completely different places. So I need to try and figure out a, a, a new game plan on where I want to stop and uh, maybe fish on Thursday and then continue uh, my trek Friday. Another day on the road, guys. Coffee time. <laughs> Anyway, uh, made it into Texas. <sighs> Almost ran out of fuel. Close call. I'm gonna refill every quarter tank now. So I'm not gonna repeat that mistake. Made it with 10 miles to spare. But uh, yeah, my hair is crazy. Okay, guys. So lunch today. Shrimp flavored cup of noodle. It's 80 cents. Reese's peanut butter cup and a Red Bull. 
because I haven't had a Red Bull in like a year, so I'm gonna treat myself to a Red Bull. But besides that, I feel pretty good. A little power, power snack, power snack. And I'm gonna have dinner when I get uh, further into Oklahoma. Yep, yep. Back on the road. So I pulled over after hearing a, kind of a pop coming from my roof rack. The wind's really, really whipping right now, guys, like crazy fast. I would say at least like 40 mile per hour gust. Uh, I heard a pop and then I look in my rear view mirror and I saw my rod rack up top starting to sway a bit. So I got out, checked it out, <clears throat> um, managed to find the issue. I had cracked my rod case. The wind had busted it off of the bracket and uh, thank God I pulled over. I'll show you what I rigged. It's gonna be loud. So I drilled extra wide holes in the thing so I can at least get, get a couple wraps of rope on it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and uh, now hopefully it's a little bit more secure. Dang, broke my rod rack. All right, guys, just got dinner. Here we go. Ooh, that look, looks pretty good. That's straight, that's straight butter, baby. Dang, tartar sauce. Ah, tartar sauce, there we go. Tartar sauce and then some hot sauce. All right, let's give this a shot. Yeah, if you guys notice that I haven't really changed out of anything, cause uh, I'm just comfortable. Man, and uh, Ooh! What are these? Mmm! Mmm! Mm-hmm! Mm-hmm! Mmm! That was really good, whatever that was. Kind of reminded me of a malasada, I'm not gonna lie. If you don't know what a malasada is, it's a, uh, it's a Portuguese pastry with uh, powdered sugar on the top. So it's a little fried dough ball. It's kind of like that a little bit. What is this, ketchup? I'm assuming this is hot sauce. Here's some tartar. Let's see how this stacks up against my uh, my flathead recipe. That's really good. That's really good. They trim the catfish really well so you don't get any of the gamey fatty or a, the, the fishy flavor. Mmm! Yes. Would do again. Let's try with the Louisiana hot sauce. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 11 bucks. Worth it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This is really good. I got about an hour left before I get into Eufaula, Oklahoma. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go fish Eufaula tomorrow. Much needed stop for dinner. Oh, hush puppy. That's what it is. Hush puppy. Let's put some hush puppy in a hot sauce. Mm-hmm. That muffin looks really good. Mmm. Mmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Mmm. That muffin's like a 10 out of a 10. I'm not just saying that. Like, super moist. Mmm, mm-hmm. If you're ever swinging through Oklahoma and you uh, pass by Catfish Roundup, but uh, yeah, check them out. Pretty good. They have a live catfish. Time to get back on the road. I arrived at Eufaula Marina Cove Extreme Cove Marina Eufaula, something like that. Oh, I'm exhausted. And uh, I want to go to sleep. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I'm gonna try and wake up early and uh, put a little bit of time out on this place, at least half day. And then, uh, then I'll head to this other little lake that uh, I found on the map. So, should be a fun little adventure. I'm beat. They're like 11, 11 and a half hours of driving today, so. Ready to go to sleep. Ready to pick up, ready to pick up a fishing rod too. Definitely want to catch one. Might even go cast one out right now. Saw some shad play grand. All right, guys. See you a bit. Well, guys, I couldn't help myself. Went down uh, to the ramp right here. Saw some bait flickering, and uh, yeah, chewed it. My first Oklahoma bass. <laughs> My second pick. Dude, this cat smoked this thing. guys but it's been raining for the past four hours luckily I've been fast asleep woke up twice but uh yeah I don't know how if I want to brave the storm today and risk getting sick or something as much as I love fishing in the rain seriously like one of my favorite times to go fish but it's uh it's kind of cold out the wind's whipping and the rain is coming down let's see uh how today plans out Ooh. Ooh. oh man definitely need those getting a little break in the rain right now cold. Time to check on the boat. A little bit of water pulled up in here. Too bad. I gotta put a drain system in this. Because uh, I don't want to short out my trolling motor. So it looks like during the day. Oh, it's cold. It's cold and it's, it doesn't look nice. Uh, I, I don't know if I feel like fishing in this. It's supposed to rain for the next like six hours. So I don't know. I don't know if that would be a wise call today as much as I honestly, personally, like, love these types of conditions. I actually don't mind them. Um, but if I want to stay healthy for nationals next week, uh, I've also done that to myself, too, where I go out and I fish in this kind of weather and end up getting sick. So it's one of those calls. I'm just trying to... Make a smart decision. Because uh, the bass are probably chewing right now. I will say that. They're, pr they're probably chewing. I mean, saw just like the short little thing that I did last night. That was fun. But uh, yeah, look at this weather. It's pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. But yeah, off and on rain. And uh, I got one more night in the Forerunner. Uh, wet rain gear in a Forerunner when it's cold at night. Not a lot of ventilation not a good move so i'm gonna keep an eye on the radar hopefully it tapers off and kind of mellows out a little bit more uh and if it uh if the rain kind of lifts then hopefully i'll be able to get on the water today that'd be really cool that'd be really cool i was just happy that i was able to catch a fish last night well instead of going out launching the boat where i could easily get trapped in a rainstorm because uh, the weatherman says, sorry, um, the weatherman says it's supposed to rain pretty hard for the next few hours, and uh, these clouds would agree with that. 
but like I said, instead of launching the boat, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna go classic shore bang. I'm gonna leave the boat like right here and I'm just gonna walk down to this ramp. Uh, same ramp that I walked to last night. See if they wanna eat a spinnerbait again. Why not, right? Why not? It's not raining right now. Get a little quick, a little quick session in. Let's do it. across this uh, ramp right here. I got off, off the ramp just in the nick of time. It's like I said, I didn't want to be out there in that rain. Cue the rain, right on time. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with my decision. 20, 25 year old me would have told me to suck it up and get out there, but older me says, now you got plenty of fishing ahead next week. Just stay dry, stay warm, don't chance anything. Go catch a fish, but then get out. T timed it, timed it perfectly, I think. It's, it's coming down again. All right guys, kind of just a recap of uh, this morning's quick little session. The reason why I was throwing a single Colorado blade instead of double willow leaves was because a single Colorado blade, those big round blades are gonna kick off a lot more thump. And I'm not sure if you can see it in my video, but my rod tip is shaking a good amount, similar to like a chatterbait in a way. But that, and I, and also some of you might, might ask, why wasn't I throwing like a top water or something like that? Um, well, when it's raining or in these like colder frontal times, um, I think it's better to throw something that's subsurface. Prefrontal, and if it's still warm out, I'll throw a top water. I mean, not to say that you couldn't catch them on a top water bait, but obviously I think last night Kenny gave me my first little clue that they were eating something subsurface, but more so a spinner bait uh, during these times of years when you have uh, a lot more bait fish pushing up shallow. Uh, there was a bunch of little shad and a little like minnows and stuff flickering really shallow. So I felt like I was doing the right thing and I managed to get a bite. So that's some of my reasoning on why I decided to go with a single Colorado blade spinner bait this morning. So I figure a couple of you guys might have that question why I decided to go with that lure and I wanted to give you guys an explanation. So hopefully uh, that helps. And let me know if you like me doing these little recaps of the day. I, I know I haven't really been doing them so much. Uh, a little birdie told me that um, something I should do a little bit more and I take construct constructive criticism uh, and uh, I need to I want to get better and I want you guys to learn more from me So let me know if you like these little post session breakdowns. Hopefully I can get on the water later Miller life beer uh, Like I said, hopefully I can get on the water a little bit later Hopefully this weather kind of lifts up if it goes partly cloudy It kind of gives me a little bit more confidence that it's not gonna just storm on me when I'm out there, but I mean, it's my first time in Oklahoma and I don't really want to chance it. I just know that these storm systems can push in crazy fast and just dump. So that's kind of why I'm deciding not to put the boat in the water right now. Uh, and plus I'm pretty hungry. It's like 8.30 in the morning, almost nine. I'm getting me some breakfast and uh, check in with you guys in a little bit. Oh yeah. I 
About to go in breakfast. Probably go to sleep after this. Jeez. <laughs> when I said it's bumping and grinding, guys, it's bumping and grinding out there. It's uh, like those are like I would say four foot, three to four foot rollers out there right now. Oh yeah, uh, definitely glad I'm not out there right now. It's kicking. This road is also kicking, but. Hey guys, well, I just stopped in here at the Rusty Hook uh, and right next to uh, Eufaula Lake, Oklahoma. And uh, they got a pretty awesome selection here, guys. Like, they got live bait back here in the corner. They got, um, they got some bluegill, they got some minnow, some goldfish, a bunch of different assortment of crappie jigs and um, a bunch of different tackle for uh, catfishing and whatnot. But what uh, I wanted to come and take a look at and just see if they had some single willow Colorado blades because I only have those two, so I wanted to kind of re-up. But look what they had in stock. They had all this good stuff right here. So picked up a couple more of those uh, single willows and even picked up a couple of these custom, these little hand ties by a, like a local tackle maker. And they got, obviously they got your war eagles and um, they got your buzz toads and whatnot. But they got a pretty awesome selection here. So if you guys are ever stopping through Eufaula in Oklahoma, stop on through the Rusty Hook and go and say hi to, to Willie. And Willie will take care of you. She's taking good care of me, so. Text Santa what's, what's it? Text Santa Road. Right there. So come on in, check them out, and uh, they'll take good care of you guys. All right. <laughs> Look at this thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, she hooked it up. Check it out. So the Rusty Hook guys, their phone number right down below. If you're ever down in Eufaula, Oklahoma, check out Willie at the Rusty Hook. You have a good old time. Some really cool baits. All right, well, looks like the weather hasn't really cleared up yet, but I'm gonna drive over to Talawanda One and uh, kind of just wait out the weather a little bit and uh, potentially put the boat in and do a lap. We'll see. We will see. But I think that'll probably, uh, that might make its own episode. I'm not sure yet. here. 